All right, guys, I'll just give you guys a few quick pointers as far as freezing and deactivating patterns inside of Mars Designer. This is a topic that we haven't really covered so far. It's very important to understand it. It's not very complicated, but you have to understand it to be able to work properly inside of Mars Designer and uh, not have huge performance issues as you are working there. So if, if you open this handout file, you can open a handout file and you can already just go in here, press spacebar and start to simulate. And if you do start to simulate this, what you're going to wind up seeing is that there's a lot of pieces of cloth in here that have a high density when it comes to polygons. And therefore, this will be very slow to animate. You, know, you can see here if I just push, like pull on something here, you can see that it's, you know, pretty much just a PowerPoint slideshow right now. Like we don't really have something that we could say is real time as far as editing is concerned. Now, of course I could switch this over to GPU mode, but simulating on GPU is very, very imprecise, you know? So we don't necessarily want to do this all the time, even if you have a very good video card, because you, you'll you have more issues with collisions and stuff like that, but it does allow you often to work on these very high density garments. If you have a really, really good GPU uh, in real time, even if you have something that's very high density there. Yeah, so if you're in uh, CPU mode, which, you know, in a lot of cases, is the more proper way to work if you're uh, dealing with things that uh, could create a lot of collision issues or uh, interpenetration problems. You know that there are options that you can deactivate patterns so that you gain a bit of performance there. But there's really two ways that you can do that. One is you can actually deactivate a pattern or the other one is that you can freeze a pattern. Now, freezing is usually what people think of when they think of deactivating a pattern. What I mean by that is that if I take something here and I press Control K, you can see that it turns blue here, which simply means that it is frozen. And I can go ahead and, and, and freeze a bunch of stuff. You can also right click on something, of course, and choose freeze and you'll be doing the same thing. Here's what people don't necessarily know about freezing. When you are freezing something, when something is frozen and you simulate, because something is frozen, it will pretty much never change. It will stay exactly the way that it is. Now, you can't pull on it, you can't animate it. It's not gonna respond to physics or stuff like that. But as you guys can see, even with everything that is frozen in here, I don't have better performances. Like my performance is as bad now as it was before. I even wonder if it's not worse actually. So we have to understand this, freezing will not give you better performance. It will momentarily deactivate something as far as simulation is concerned, but it will not give you better performance. Freezing does not release, if you will, the performance cost of something. Marvel's designer still has to keep everything that you have frozen. It still has to keep it active. When something is frozen, it still responds to collisions. So if you do want to gain performance back then, what do you do? Well, you can always just erase everything. Uh, that'll give you a better performance, but that's not quite the solution that you are looking for, of course. Now, if you want to gain back the performance of something, you really want to say like, hey, this, this thing here, I don't want to animate it anymore. Or, or I don't want to simulate it anymore and I want to gain that performance back, then you have to deactivate here. So if I take these pieces that are frozen, let me unfreeze them. So control K to unfreeze. So if you right click on something here, you guys can see here that I can deactivate something. So I can deactivate pattern only or pattern and suing. But as you guys can see here, so I can do control J and I can deactivate something. So why don't I do this again then? I'm like, okay, so I want to simulate this one here. Let's uh, shift to a box selection to select everything else. Let's do control J. There we go. Now everything is deactivated, but this here and these two things here. So these things are frozen, but this thing is not frozen and it still is active. So if I simulate once more, see what it looks like. That's a lot better. Uh, you know, it still is a bit of a slideshow there, but it's uh, a lot better than what it was before in terms of performance there. So you have to deactivate something if you don't want it to simulate and you want to gain back that performance. Now, of course, when something is deactivated, it is obviously not simulated, but the drawback is that it will also uh, be disabled for collision purposes. So I can't show you in here in this scene. Oh, maybe I can. Maybe I can take this here and just yank it across here. You'll see that it, it literally does not 
respond at all. So when something is deactivated, it may as well not be in your scene. Uh, it's completely gone there. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's a bit of a subtlety there between freezing and deactivating, but that subtlety is very important because we often uh, are in this situation where we're like, okay, like this is very, very heavy scene. We want to uh, optimize our performance as much as possible. But if you freeze things, uh, it's not gonna change anything. You really have to deactivate patterns if you want to gain back the performance there. Let me actually here, just, just go in here and simply delete everything. Again, just for performance reasons, it is slightly faster to remove something from your scene because there's less of that synchronization that has to happen. You guys have probably seen that kind of uh, little bar that pops up once in a while that says that Marvelous is synchronizing. You know, if something is not in your scene, it, it will still give you a slightly faster synchronization speed there or a much faster depending on the complexity of your garment there. So ultimately erasing something from your scene still is the best way that you can uh, optimize performance there. But anyway, so if I take this here, right? So right now, let's say that I do go to GPU mode so that this is really, really quick. But what happens if I deactivate, let's say this little pop part right here, right? So we have two options in here. So there's deactivate pattern only or pattern ensuing. And the distinction is actually quite important, right? Because Take a look at this here. So if I take this piece and I just move it up here just really, really quickly, you guys can see all the seam lines, right? So these are all the seams that we have connecting this uh, little top section to this more rigid trim, I guess. If I do control J, now this part is deactivated, but you guys can see that the seams are still the same color. The seams are still active. Whereas if I right click here and I do the other option that is in here, deactivate pattern ensuing, now suddenly, the seam also turns transparent or something there. So, and that distinction is very, very important because if you deactivate pattern and sewing, both the pattern and the sewing will be disregarded upon simulation. So this is going to happen. It's, your garment will essentially disregard all the seams and will fall to the floor. But if you do the other option, if you right click, deactivate pattern only, but you keep the sewings active, then you can imagine that, uh, what's going to happen. The sewings will still be active, so your garment will stay in place, but still the panel itself will uh, be deactivated for collision purposes. Anyway, so all these little distinctions are important because depending on the context in which you want to deactivate or freeze or do something else, you'll want to either be using freeze or deactivate pattern only or deactivate pattern and sewing. Uh, I use these three options uh, regularly. I'm always going back and forth between these three things. And I think that it's really, really important when you're working in Marvel's Designer to always be deactivating or freezing everything that you're not using at that moment so that you get the best possible performance out of whatever it is that you're trying to do, really.